I've got to tell you, this is a, a remarkable storm. And, uh, you know, Dr. Rick Nabb said it best moments ago, forget about everything that you know about storms that have come up and across the Northeast in the past. Because while this is a Category 1 storm with 75 mile per hour wind, the central pressure now is 951. Now, comparatively, you can have a hurricane very easily with a pressure of 993. The standard sea level pressure is 1014. This is an incredibly low central pressure. The pressure of the superstorm, which many of you well, will remember from 1993, came up along the Northeast coast and paralyzed the Northeast, all the way from Atlanta, all the way up into far northern parts of New England. That had a pressure of 960, so this is almost 10 millibars lower. This is an incredible atmospheric disturbance, and it's going to be a long duration event and that is a, the biggest thing that we want you to know here. This is not simply a category one hurricane. So here's a look at the area of strong wind. You can see just how large it is extending 500 miles from the center and that's going to begin to move in tomorrow morning. So today is the day folks. Today is the last opportunity to prepare in the Northeast for the storm and please understand wh what's around you. Where are the big trees? Where are the older trees that might be weaker? Where might they fall on your house or apartment? You want to know that so you can prepare and think about where you want to ride this storm out. So we've got this area of strong wind coming into 95 tomorrow morning. Then it continues to intensify through the afternoon and by the evening. This is the area of winds gusting to hurricane force coming into New York and Philly and also getting towards Baltimore and DC. That's where we have high wind warnings in effect and those high wind warnings go for 36 hours in these areas. So this is again going to be a very long duration event it's going right through the early morning on Tuesday solidly here across this northeast corridor and then finally that wind begins to settle down late Tuesday and going into early Wednesday and that huge area of wind is going to be piling up the water along the coast and driving it right down Long Island Sound where there is a warning now for five to ten foot feet of storm surge. And look, this is Tuesday morning, by the way. Look at this. I mean, this is unbelievable. You can see the outline of the United States right through here. Look at the area of strong wind extending up into Canada, out to Wisconsin, down through the southeast, and covering the entire eastern seaboard. That gives you a sense of just how incredibly large. Now, here's a look at the timing of everything. This is Sunday. The wind's increasing to 25 to 45 miles per hour through the day today. Winds gusting to 60 miles per hour plus. And then tomorrow is going to be the big day, and it's going to get a lot worse through the day tomorrow. So don't think if you go out tomorrow morning, you're wondering whether to go to work. It's okay. Uh, maybe I can make it. It's going to get a lot worse through the course of the day. Just getting out of the way of the hurricane, getting out of harm's way. We are sandbagging. We're going to board up tomorrow morning. We brought in our furniture, our outdoor furniture. We're going to get tarps and sandbags and put them against the house. We are bagging all kinds of different goodies. I'm not sure if it's going to happen or not, so better safe than sorry. Because it's so unpredictable, I, I, I think we really don't know what's going to happen, but we're just going to prepare for the worst. We get apprehensive, but we're not crazy. You can replace the house things in the house. What are you going to do? Well, we end up buying a generator too, so we're really prepared this up, just, just in case. Some people get real excited. I'm not real excited. It's just uh, something we have to be aware of and be careful. And this one is going to be different from Irene, uh, primarily because of a very different track coming in from a completely different direction when it comes ashore. Uh, this leftward turn that we're forecasting, all the models are agreeing on this general scenario. You know, Irene went you know, straight up the coast. This is going to make this left-hand turn. And when, you, when a cyclone takes a completely different track, then uh, that increases the chances beyond what would already be there for different spots that uh, did or did not experience uh, flooding and other impacts during Irene to have a different outcome this time. So you have to prepare as if you've never experienced this one before because you haven't. And emergency managers, if they tell you to evacuate, you gotta go. And if you're told to stay off the roads and take other preparations, do it this time, even if you weren't impacted last time. Dr. Nab, that perpendicular track into the coastline, how much does that play in a role and how much surge we're going to see north of the landfall location? Well, the, the combination of the direction of, of motion and, uh, and the, the flow into a coastline that is shaped, generally speaking here, to capture uh, the water and focus it into the coastal areas, uh, that's the big concern. And because of the large size 
of Sandy. You know, the larger systems much more capable of producing significant storm surge over a large area than smaller more systems would be. So all the way North Carolina up into uh, the south facing uh, shores of Massachusetts and all the, the different sounds and bays along the way uh, could be uh, experiencing storm surge. But that includes places like Long Island Sound with the water getting piled up as it comes in from the east. So the New York City area is certainly uh, going to be experiencing a storm surge threat. So lots of folks uh, under the gun for that particular hazard. It's going to get a lot worse, Mike, and it's going to be worse than Irene. That's a given. The water is already at high tide. Now, the tide is beginning to go out a little bit, but the water, uh, those higher waves washed all the way up here. We've got about 15 uh, yards to the uh, dune and the beach here. But then if you look south, uh, the water took over the whole beach. Now, the tide is beginning to go out. It's not going to go too far out because it's competing with this increasing northeast wind now, gusting upwards of 25 to 30 miles an hour. In fact, up at Sandy Hook, the water is already up to seven feet, uh, the tide, and we'll probably or likely break a record tide at Sandy Hook. That was 10.1 Hurricane Donna in 1960. Irene last year got up to 9.8, but at seven feet at Sandy Hook, already some back bay flooding around Manasquan and also the Seabright area. So See, things are going wow. down here quickly as the water rises. Meanwhile, around here thinking of buying some bread, some water today. Well, guess again, because yesterday uh, we sent our crews out to some of the stores around the area and a lot of folks were disappointed. They couldn't find a bottle of water and some of these stores are saying they may not get any more water in before the storm hits uh, later tonight and uh, tomorrow. Also hitting the rain, the rain and the wind, the big wind along with the wet ground leads to uprooted trees. Many trees from here south towards D.C., Philadelphia, Baltimore still have a lot of leaves on them, although they're beautiful in fall color. And that means we're going to have uprooted trees, power outages, rainfall totals, a wide swath, including all of New Jersey and Pennsylvania of three to six inches, some locally higher amount. That water is piling up now along with all that wave action. That's what's headed for the coastline. And because of the nature of the coastline, this could be very bad indeed in New York City. Because of this L shape, the water sort of converges there, which maximizes the potential and be coming up through the Raritan Bay and then getting into New York Harbor and also coming down Long Island Sound. Now we had a four and a half foot surge in Irene. This could actually top that and we came very close to causing major transportation problems there in New York City. You know, if you get enough water in these subways, these subterranean tunnels, you've got a lot of wiring in there. You get seawater in there. You can't use that wiring anymore. It's right. got to be ripped out and that can take weeks. It rusts. Yes. And then it becomes completely completely unusable. Exactly. It could, I mean, would you anticipate then a significant impact to the transit system in New York? If we get that flooding in the subways, you've got 8 million people who use that every day. And this could be amazing if that happens. This, what, what would have to happen though is the center would have to make a landfall likely in New Jersey. Though, yes, on the central coast of New Jersey, piling up all that water. And the thing is, it'll continue even after the storm moves